Logan Paul says he actually felt the wrath of God after mocking the Christian faith. And United States women's national soccer star Megan Rapino is injured six minutes into the final game of her career. And she claims that this is proof that God does not exist. As we look at different people who have mocked God and how God just might have dealt with them almost immediately. What happens when famous people mock God? Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at a plethora of celebrities, stars, and comedians who have mocked God and seen the ramifications of doing so. But before we get into that, we would love for you to subscribe to the Good Fight Ministries YouTube channel as well as leave a like on this video just to help that algorithm. You can also leave a comment, say hello to us. And if you are listening via podcast, you can leave a five-star review if you feel so led. And also, guys, if you are looking for a good book to give as a gift, right now we have Sparky the Broken Mirror. You guys can check that out at not only sparkybook.com, but at goodfight.org. But let's get right into it. Uh, you see, there are a number of celebrities, and a lot of people are talking because of an interview that was done, kind of an exit interview for her career, uh, for Megan Rapino, the openly homosexual soccer player who has been famous for kneeling for the American uh, flag salutes while standing for saluting other countries that are communistic and <laughs> But nonetheless, uh, be, besides that, uh, people are also talking about how she really let her team down in the World Cup and probably shouldn't have been out there at her age. But before we get into some of her argumentation, one of the things we want to look at are a number of different star stars who or celebrities who have mocked God and seemingly uh, been dealt with almost immediately. And I think one of the more prominent figures uh, right now, whether it is with celebrity boxing or his show Impulsive or his brother Jake Paul or his wrestling, Logan Paul is all over the news all the time, whether you're on Twitter or otherwise. And he was talking about uh, somewhat recently mocking his friend and some of the ramifications of doing so. I made some pretty uh he's going to pretty out of line comments cry. to George about George's beliefs. And I said uh I, I'm not going to say what I said. I'm not even going there again because I'll tell you why. The following 3 weeks have been the hardest period of my f life. Buddy God kicked me in the as hard as he f could there, there is there, it's soon we call that a happening. god smack. <laughs> I you went, got I went, god smack. I went, son. There's no way. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 um, mm. ironically, I defamed Jesus and God, and I felt His wrath. <clears throat> and by the way, I want, I want to make something clear. I'm not an atheist. I believe in God. People think I, I, I don't, I don't believe in God. I might not identify as the same God as as you, but um, it was just, it was very telling to me how the karmic energy of the universe. This is what I'll call it just went right back around and, and put me in my place. Now, something that is interesting, obviously he talks about karma there and the universe and so forth, and that's what people want to do because truth be told, uh, it is a suppression of truth and unrighteousness. As Romans chapter one tells us, instead of giving the creator his due, uh, people wanna give creation, the things that God has created, including the universe, uh, they want to give the things that should be attributed to God to the universe. But nonetheless, something he says is that he felt the wrath of God for the first time. But actually, this is what the Bible describes. In one of the most popular chapters in all of Scripture, one of the most popular statements in all of Scripture, is the fact that Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But later on in that same chapter, one of the things that he mentions there in verse 36 of chapter 3 of John's gospel is this. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, 
but the wrath of God abides on him. You see, if somebody is not a believer in Jesus Christ, the wrath of God currently abides on them right now. And I think what we see in the culture today, whether it is the depression and all of um, the pharmacia that needs to be used to suppress the feelings that so many people have, uh, the truth is, or alcohol or whatever drugs people are using or all the different things they put in their life to try to numb themselves to the reality that they will die one day, uh, a lot of that is because the wrath of God currently abides on them. They don't have the joy of the Lord. They haven't had their sins forgiven. They're not bought and paid for and walking in that joy and that strength and having the eternal help of the glory of Jesus Christ. And so that's something that is on them continuously, even if they are suppressing it or not feeling it uh, in terms of actually understanding what's going on. But something else that really stuck out to me, and I've seen this clip another number of times. Now, I'm going to give a caveat. There is some colorful language here, and these are not my words. These are the words of comedian Andrew Schultz, who is not a blood-bought believer by any means, but he has some, I guess you could say, an interesting take when it comes to the famous Christopher Hitchens, and not only some of his, uh, some of the books that he wrote, but also what it looked like at the end of his life. There's this other guy named Christopher Hitchens. I don't know if you guys have heard of Christopher Hitchens. He wrote a book called God is Not Great, which they sell at the airport. Just you could do with that information what you want, okay? I saw a guy buying that at the airport. I went up to him, I was like, arrival or departure, homie? I need to know if you're going to my city, so I gotta buy three Bibles to balance this whole out. Anyway, so Christopher Hitchens, what he would do for a living, he would, he would go around the world giving speeches about how God doesn't exist. And then he died recently. And you wanna know what he died from? Vocal cord cancer. That sounds a lot like God going, While plenty of people have pointed that out, and a lot of people do find it interesting how uh, he came to his end, there is another famous, not atheist, but deist in the person of Voltaire. And I want to read a little bit about Voltaire and what ultimately happened to his place of residency. In 1764, Voltaire wrote, quote, The Bible, that is what fools have written, what imbeciles commend, what rogues teach and young children are made to learn by heart. Quote, We are living in the twilight of Christianity. In a 1767 letter to Frederick the Great, the King of Prussia, he wrote, quote, Christianity is the most ridiculous, the most absurd and bloody religion that has ever infected the world. My one regret in dying is that I cannot aid you in this noble enterprise of extirpating the world of this infamous superstition. Voltaire ended every letter to his friends, extra says, el infame, crush the infamy, the Christian religion. In his pamphlet, The Sermon on the Fifty from 1762, he attacked viciously the Old Testament, biblical miracles, biblical contradictions, the Jewish religion, the Christian God, the virgin birth, and Christ's death on the cross. Of the four Gospels, he wrote, quote, What folly, what misery, what puerile and odious things they contain. And the Bible is filled with contradictions, follies, and horrors. Voltaire regarded most of the doctrines of the Christian faith, the Incarnation, the Atonement, the Trinity, Communion, as folly and irrational. And finally, quote, to invent all those things that are in the Bible, the last degree of rascality, to believe them, the extreme of brutal stupidity. So what would be the end after Voltaire would pass on, hoping, hoping to be the in the twilight of Christianity, that Christianity was going to pass away, it would be gone and long gone and dead. Well, here's what the Mi Missionary Register of 1836, long after he died, had to say. Quote, Ackworth recounts, I went through Geneva and was refreshed by meeting the committee of the Evangelical Society. With those proceedings and objects, I was so much gratified that I wrote to this society to make a liberal grant of 10,000 copies of the French scriptures to promote the objects of that society. Our committee have only granted 5,000, but I have no doubt they will ere long send the other 5,000. Before I left Geneva, my friend observed, quote, probably you will like to see the house where Voltaire lived and where he wrote his plays. 
prompted by the spirit of curiosity so characteristic of an Englishman to visit the house of the celebrated infidel. I was about to put my hat to walk into the country when he said, quote, it is not necessary that you should put on your hat. And he introduced me over the threshold of one room to another and said, quote, "'Tis the room where Voltaire's play were acted for the amusement to himself and his friend. And what was gratification in observing that the room had been converted into sort of a repository for Bibles and religious tracts. Oh, my Christ, friends, that the spirit of infidelity had been there to witness the results. <laughs> I just think it is so funny when I am reading that. And I think it is wonderful to think of somebody writing long after Voltaire thinking he's in the twilight of Christianity uh, and then to see uh, that he would pass on and yet his very home would be used to be a repository for Christian literature and specifically the Bibles. Just fantastic. But Voltaire and Hitchens and Logan Paul are not the only ones who have made quips and some take longer and the hereafter, but some immediately are dealt with. In fact, Heather McDonald is a comedian, and she was joking uh, about the fact that not only had she gotten a bunch of jabs, but how much Jesus loves her more than anyone else because she hasn't been bothered uh, with any health problems by getting them. I don't mean to brag. I don't care. But I want you to know, double-vaxxed, booster, flu shot, and I'm going to be honest— I have the shingle shot, too. And I still get my period. What? Yes! Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. Comedian Heather McDonald is out of a Valley Hospital tonight after she collapsed over the weekend during a show at the Tempe Improv. She spoke with Team 12's Colleen Socorro today about the frightening tumble. And Colleen, how is she doing? She's doing better. Heather McDonald says she stayed at St. Joseph's Hospital over the weekend as they ran tests to figure out what happened here Saturday night at the Tempe Improv. She says they don't really know why she collapsed three minutes into her act. In front of Saturday night's crowd. I love the crowd there, and I was just, like, excited to do it. So. Celebrity comedian Heather McDonald ready to deliver an evening of material at Tempe Improv. When it happened, I just, I just couldn't believe it. Just a few jokes in. I was starting to feel, like, Disney weird. And I was like, wow, this better pass soon. I don't know how I'm going to power through this hour and 10 minutes of material. She says it wasn't alcohol or her management saying she suffered a skull fracture in the fall. Well, Heather McDonald is not the only one to have, sadly, a head injury uh, when mocking God. In fact, Lady Gaga was hit on the head during a performance of the song Judas, in which she not only mocks Christ, but also even sings the lyric, Judas is the demon I cling to. And not only Lady Gaga, but some artists, not just getting hit in the head, have met their ultimate demise after mocking Christ, mocking the fact that we can have eternal life, and even going to the side of Satan. For example, Bon Scott, who sang the song Highway to Hell as the former frontman of ACDC, sang... Hey, Satan, paying my dues, playing in a rockin' band. Hey, mama, look at me. I'm on my way to the promised land. I'm on the highway to hell. Highway to hell. But sadly enough, Bon Scott would be taken to King's College Hospital in Camberwell, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The official report of the coroner concluded that Scott had died of acute alcohol poisoning and classified it as, quote, death by misadventure. Not only Bon Scott, which was one of the biggest bands of all time in ACDC, but also probably the biggest band of all time, the Beatles. John Lennon, the front man for the Beatles, who once joked that they were more popular than Jesus and that he would be proven right in that estimation, also met an untimely end when the killer, Mark David Chapman, shot him to death on December 8th, 1980. And before we play this clip, because a lot of people are talking about it, because this is Megan Rapino, who was all over the news, specifically during the World Cup. And prior to that, for some of her stances, uh, some people also pointed out her arrogance when it came to winning, 
even signing little kids autographs without ever looking them in the face dressed up in some very strange attire we could say and what we want to do here is not only play this clip but also give an answer to what she says after her team was in the finals of the professional soccer league here in the united states for the women and she tore her achilles reportedly six minutes into her last match i'm most upset that i'm now just uh a NARP, a normal regular person having to do rehab, <laughs> which is <laughs> devastating. Perhaps if any of you guys have, if any of you NARPs have had an injury, it's terrible. You have to like do your job and, you know, go to rehab. And this is a long one. Although I'm, I'm going to get the Aaron Rodgers treatment, whatever that is. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be calling him or whoever did his surgery because we need to speed this up. But yeah, I thought about it a little bit. I mean, you know, I'm not a religious person or anything. And if there was a God, like, this is proof that there isn't, because it's f***ed up. Um, so, yeah, it just, it's just f***ed up, you guys. Like, it's just six minutes in, I eat my Achilles. I mean, what the f***? Wow. I mean, we could talk about how what she was saying was a non sequitur. We could talk about how she's trying to put it in jest. I'm not really a religious person, but this is the final nail in the coffin uh, in the fact that God exists or whatever, you know, she's trying to say he doesn't. And so we're going to bring on Pastor Joe here because Joe, she's making an argument that because she was injured in her last game, uh, apparently an Achilles injury is what the reports are saying, and she wasn't able to play and her team ended up losing and all these things are going wrong. You know what, Joe, this mu th this is the final nail in the coffin. I guess God just doesn't get Megan Merpino's all right. Well, you know, uh, her mocking God and a lot of people mocking God uh, is actually evidence of God. Uh, in fact, the scriptures prophesy that this would be prevalent in the last days. Peter said in Second Peter chapter three, verse three, know that you should know this, that in the last days mockers will arise, come with their mockings, and uh, will follow after their own lust. And Jude says a very similar thing. Actually he refers he's referring back to what Peter is saying there, I believe, in uh, the book of Jude, uh, verses chapter one, verse eighteen, nineteen, really is just one chapter if you want to call it that. Uh, he says, uh, you should know that, you know, uh, that the apostles prophesied uh, that beforehand uh, that mockers would arise walking after their own lot, lust in the last times and, and he says their own ungodly lust and basically repeats what Peter says and we're seeing that right now and you know a lot of people have quipped her being injured because that she's a flamboyant unrepentant lesbian uh, and her mocking God and being injured a lot of people are saying that's evidence that there is a God you know and I would say, you know what, the evidence basically is a fulfillment of prophecy, but it does show me, you know, uh, and I'm not saying God injured her and we don't we wouldn't wish injury upon her. We we pray and hope and I prayed for her. God, bring her to you. Uh, help her to come to know you, you know. Uh, it's heart, it's heartbreaking when you think about her situation because she's in dire straits. And it's not just consequences that seem to happen to people that mock God in the natural. Now, there's all eternity. There's hell to pay forever. Going into a crisis eternity, Chad, uh, that's just heartbreaking. So when you think about the whole scenario here, uh, I think it's, it's evidence that she believes in God. And the Bible says in Romans 1 that even the atheist suppresses the knowledge of God. They don't want to admit it, so they make excuses not to believe in God because she's obviously upset with God. How come you let me get injured? Well, Megan, if you're refusing to repent, you're leading by a bad example, potentially millions of gals by your example away from God, uh, whether it's by your lesbianism or your, your, your affront to God with your mocking, uh, you know what? It's no wonder you're going to go through some incredibly... And by the way, this wasn't the only hardship. She went wide on the goal on the penalty kick against yeah. Sweden to end her World Cup career. I mean, she ruined... I mean, they lost the game because she went wide on that goal kick. And so she went out that way and she was really angry about that. Then this happened. So I think she's recoiling against God. How can you let this happen? But she needs to repent. Uh, you know, those who deny God, they deny science, you know? I mean, atheists have to believe that nothing created the entire cosmos time, space, and matter, and nothing can't create anything. So um, there's plenty of evidence of God, whether it's, you know, anthropo anthropic principle, you know, creation itself, uh, information, cells, DNA, all that. But uh, I think it's important for us to realize that she denies, she's denied science when she tries to pretend that men and women are made, or in her mind, evolved equally when it comes to physicality. Uh, women are far superior to men physically when it comes to doing the most important thing in life, which is having a baby. 
So they're actually superior to men physically in certain ways, and men are superior in other ways. God's designed it that way. And Chad, because she was denying, she was, you know, saying that uh, she believes that uh, transgender people, biological men, should be allowed to come on to the, uh, you know, the women's soccer team. She's saying that as she's retiring. Yeah, I thought that was, that's funny you thought that too, because I thought that's interesting. She's going to be out, and then as a bunch of men take it over, biological men, she could say, well, look, I was the last real woman to do it. I'm not that that's her motive, but it's kind of interesting. It's on her way out. But it's really interesting because it's been in the news lately, uh, because there were always rumors but there wasn't a lot of, you know, people were saying, well, where's the evidence? Uh, that U15, this would be 15 and under teams, that a U15 team uh, had beat the World Cup team that she was on yep. uh, prior to their run their, where they won the World Cup. And that was denied by a lot of people that, oh, that didn't really happen and so forth. And it's interesting because Carly Lloyd, who, Lloyd, who's on that team, recently came out and she was asked on an X interview, she was asked, you know, uh, you know, is it true that this happened? And I'll give you a couple of states, statements that were made that I think are quite interesting here. She's basically being asked, Carly, is it true that you lost to a bunch of 15-year-old boys? And this was like, in the context of an embarrassing thing that happened. And she says, yes, it's true, I know. Thousands of people have already brought that up, Lloyd answered. They were good, okay? She says, well, they were good. And then uh, she says, we actually lost to youth at Bayern Munich team as well in my career. And then we went to the Olympics and the World Cup. So in other words, we lost a 15-year-old in Germany. We lost a 15-year-old, uh, the FS team and so forth. And this is what I think is interesting. A user says in response, and I think it's or a, a common response, typically when someone mentions this, meaning losing to these 15-year-old kids, boys, Young boys, not 16, 17, 18-year-olds even, guys, 15-year-olds. I'll post one of the pub uh, photos of you standing with one of the boys. And I've seen this photo. He's like a foot taller than her, you know? And she says, I mean, come on. And then she responds. I think this is really interesting. Uh, Carly responds by saying, they should beat us, these 15-year-old boys. They're bigger, stronger, faster. Boys, I always give us a run for our money. It was a great prep now for the World Cup. She's admitting they're biologically different. It's so obvious. Now, think about this. These were 15-year-old boys in Dallas. What if you got the best 15-year-old boys? These guys trounced them five to two. What if you got the best 15-year-old boys uh, in the United States? And then you allowed them to try out for the women's. They would destroy the women that are on that team. And guess what? I'm sorry. Even in her prime, uh, Rapino would not even be a bench warmer on that team. No. So for her to say, oh, yeah, the, the best men or the best biological men that play soccer, that claim to be women, they could take our spots if they could beat us. She knows it's a lie. So she's lying about science. She's lying about reality. And for her, I like what Sage Jill said, you know, the sports commenter. She said, basically, this only proves when she says that there must not be a God if you let me get injured, that she said, well, basically, basically proves that she's just a huge narcissist. Yeah, I think that is, a, that is a great point. And, you know, something I was looking at in Scripture when it comes to all these mockers, and, you know, you mentioned the, the narcissism there, and I think of Acts chapter 12. There's something very interesting that takes place in Acts chapter 12. We have King Herod Agrippa, and not only with King Herod Agrippa, he's just moving along with the poles of the people, and he's like, well, wait a second, they love the fact that I get to kill James, Right. And they like yeah. this. Let's kill Peter next. And God's like, no, no, no. You don't get to kill Peter. Yeah. Right? And and God saves Peter. And then after that, then you have Agrippa speaking to the people there once again. And then what takes place with Agrippa? Oh, he's a god. He's a god. Yeah. And there it is. And by the way, if you look at the obstinate look of Megan Rapinoe when they actually did win the World Cup, because the United States women's team is usually really good. Yeah. When they won the World Cup... I deserve this. I deserve this. Like the weirdest kind of obstinance. Yeah. And then to be taken back down. Now, praise God for her. She still has time because for Agrippa, even from the historical reports, Luke gives us the divine commentary that tells us that he was eaten by worms. Yeah. Like we know that even from Josephus, yeah. that he had some sort of parasite yeah. and so forth that yeah, took place. Right. But the divine commentary tells us that God's ultimately the one who laid him down. And what I love from that, Joe, is what it says in Acts right after it says that he that he was eaten by worms and died. Verse 24 is my favorite part. But the word of the Lord continued to grow and to be multiplied. Amen. What a contrast, you know. <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's, it's amazing because that's what we should praise God for is we should be who yeah. God's created us to be, Amen. you know. And it's interesting because, can you, can, I mean, what would you say to a man who is upset with his wife because, or just upset and just is down on women because, you know, she had a baby and then he, 
he laid next to her and he's hoping to have a baby. It just didn't happen. And he says, I'm embarrassed that I can't have a baby. Why would you be embarrassed that you can't do something that God didn't create you to do? Uh, why should Carly Lloyd be embarrassed that these 15-year-old boys beat them? God created women differently. They can have babies. God created uh, men differently, and they are bigger, stronger, faster. They have different things they're called to. So neither side should be embarrassed. What we should do is say, God, what's your will for me, and how can I fulfill uh, your call on me to be the person that you've called me to be? And with Megan, she wants to be her own God. She's always tried to stand out with the hair, with her lesbianism, with being you know flamboyant. And the Bible says pride comes before a fall, and God humbles. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So the, be careful, man, because the Bible says Pride goes before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. And God knows how to humble us. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And it says in due time, he'll lift you up. We want to be lifted up. And that only happens through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You watch all this mockery going on. And first of all, pray for those who would be in this position. As Joe already mentioned earlier in the show, 2 Peter chapter 3 said, Mockers will come with their mocking. And in that same context, they'll say, oh, it's always been cyclical. The whole world, it's all just always gone like this. But it says this, to the to the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years a day. Why? What's the context of that? His coming. is coming for us, Second Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 9, that he is not slow concerning his coming for us, but he's patient, not willing, Amen. that even Megan Rapinoe would perish, but that all Amen. would come to Lord, repentance. Lord, bring her to yeah. her senses and repentance. Bring her, bring the girl that she's with or whatever, and also, if you're not in Christ, you come on to the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Come right to now. Jesus before it's too late. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching 511 News. You can check out some of the older episodes as well as the Good Fight Radio Show and videos we have right here on our YouTube channel. And this week's feature product is Sparky the Broken Mirror. You can check it out at sparkybook.com.